G'day. You have just received your Stockman Rover, and here's a handover video of what we found for maintenance, how to set up and use your Rover, as well as the important pack away and what to do traveling. This is the Stockman Rover. We're starting here at the back on the handover, what happens in the kitchen. We're gonna move up to the front panel all of our switches, inside lights, fans, how to work the inside. And finally, we're gonna finish up with hitching up to the vehicle and all our little things that we'll do before we leave and how we check the Stockman Rover on our handover video. So let's start here at the back. Now we've got the whale tail here. Please remember there is a key that you can lock. So when we do this with the keys, lock the key and then shut the handle. Now I usually only lock one, so I'll consistently just pick that one for locking. And that generally just makes it easy of when I want to have a quick look at the kitchen. So that's the trick to open up the whale tail. I'm now going to open, turn sideways. All of them are sideways. I can now open up there. Now here's a key tip. Let's say that our key locks have got sticky, dirty, or not working well what we can do is we can actually use this and there's a padlock set in there. So if I wanted to, I can then lock it, close it and put a padlock in there that will lock it without using the original key. So there's always an alternative. Now they're all sideways, all my tabs are open. That's gone all the way up and this is the kitchen on the Rover. Here's our kitchen, what do we do first? Now we've said in other videos a couple of tips, let's run through it. I'm gonna pull my barbecue out. Now it's quite firm, don't worry, it is just this suction cup here holding it in place. So you gotta give it a little bit of a tug. We've got a tea towel holder here, or great for carabiners, hanging lights or bug zappers, all kinds of stuff there I can use on my barbecue. I decide to change or move my barbecue. It is only a couple of screw bolts underneath and I can move the barbecue out of the way. What I want to know about the Sizzler barbecue. Now on this one here, it's notorious for corrugation that these two little bolts here on the lid come loose. So please check those bolts every once in a while. Every thousand Ks, we want to check all the bolts, wheel nuts and all types of things moving on here after a thousand kilometers, please continue to check no matter what the journey is you're on. So these little lid ones are definitely something I check. We've got a plate here. Remember this cast iron plate, I can actually put a pot on there. So it's got a grill, I can drop the pots in there and it's great for the, using it, pots and not the cast plate. So really versatile. It does have a good grease trap underneath, so just turn your tab straight and you've got a grease trap there to clean out. Turn the tab over. It's got the igniter here and this is going to join here on my gas system. I turn the gas bottle on. I've got a valve directing left or right bottle and I've got two gas bayonet fittings just right here. What we like about these fittings is they are just a push in, push and turn. So really good and safe. Now I can never get the plastic plug out. So I just have to remember the plastic plug has the space or tab in the middle and then you turn either way. So you can't just keep turning it. So just like that to the middle and then pull it out. This guy is gonna go in there again, just finding that tab turning. So again, where the gap was went up, turned, locked on, and I'm now click start with my gas on at the front. I'm ready for cooking. That was a sizzler barbecue. When we do want to set up, number one tip is when I get in here, I want to open up the bottom and I have my sink and water pump section. Great thing before I start camping is this is a dust plug for the drain for the sink. By taking that out, getting my long hose out the bottom and setting that up before I start unpacking everything on here, because it's much easier to do it then than once I've got cartons of drinks and snacks 
on the table. Second thing we do is when we do get into here, I've got a drawer with all my keys and my manual. So here is my manual for the Rover. It's greatly printed out with all my Rover options, how to set up and included all the manuals for the items like air conditioner, fridge, chargers, and water pumps. They're all in here with our set. Now, one thing I love here about the Rover is the instructions for the basic items, but it's also this little one right here in your manual is gonna be our Rover checklist. This one is to live in your glove box, and it is a great one checks before setting off. We'll go through this list today, but this is a great little glove box handover with our Rover manual and our set of keys. Inside there, I also have spare fuses, air filters, and some extra keys and items. All the keys are labeled really, really well, so I can see I've got my water tanks, my big doors, as well as my toolbox or my front cupboards. I've got my table on the side, everything labeled really well, and two sets of keys there. So we'll go through those today on our handover. So right here, we've gone through these drawers here. Best little bit of maintenance. Now we did a bit of corrugation over the last trip that we had. And when we use this, we're back and forth, open, close, open, close. And what we found with this handle is if it ever feels loose, just tighten that up and that'll make it work a lot better. If you find that your handle is not locking in, in, out like that, just tighten them up a little bit there. Let's have a look at what we've got under the bonnet. So this guy here has our RV80, so our inner drive system. We've got a 240 or shore power, mains power charger. A 240 charger means that we're charging when we plug in at home, at a campsite, or with a generator. This charger will be working. When we plug in at home, we wanna leave the camper plugged in all the time. So if I've stored it in a shed where there's no sun shining, leave it plugged in, it will take care of itself. If I don't have a position where I can leave it plugged in, please make sure you check it every two weeks or at least every month to make sure we can plug it in or charge up those batteries. 240 power is plugging in and using a generator to run our air con for the whole night is how we're gonna get power inside this when we're bush camping. But plugging it in is important and managing your battery through the battery monitor. Now what we have here beside the 240 charger is our DC-DC charger. This is charging off a 50 amp Anderson plug, so a gray Anderson plug, plug in, charge the batteries while we're driving. It's also connected to our rooftop solar. So we've got 100 watts of solar, and we've got a solar, another Anderson plug right here, and this one is for our solar blanket. So pumping in the power, 100 watts from the roof, sometimes that's gonna be in the shade or under the tree, so that solar blanket is the most effective. Put it out there in the sun away from camp, and that's gonna keep you running. Power is a big thing here, and power is based on amp hours. We have 200 amp hours there. Now in our experience, using the fridge, using the lights and fans throughout the night, we're using 25% of our battery. Now through the day, our fridge is working hard, so our solar panel is gonna put some of that back in. The first night we arrive at 100%, the first morning is 75%. Throughout the day, we might stay at 75, or we might go up a little bit. The next day we're down to 50%. The next day we're down to 25%. So three full days of no sunshine and we're still doing okay using the fridge, the lights, and using our fans all night long. This is a way to charge through the car as well. So that's gonna add 40 amps per hour back in. So every hour driving is really gonna give me a night's accommodation. Maybe two hours to be safe is gonna work it out 25% over a 24 hour period. So right here, what we have going on is our isolation switch here. Now in our new 2024 model, what we have 
is a fan around our inverter or our battery system. So if we're using our inverter and we've decided to use an induction plate, our Ninja cooktop, or a coffee machine kettle, we can plug any of those appliances in there if we're under 2000 watts. So most coffee machines, the Ninja, or other things that are 1800 watts are perfectly fine. A stock standard ke kettle is right around 2200 or 2400 watts. So when you buy a kettle, please check the number on the bottom before plugging it in. Our inverter, we wanna use that. It might create some heat in here, so we've got a button here. It's an additional fan under the bench, and that fan there is gonna disperse the heat away from the inverter and the batteries. Using this fan, if it is stinking hot, definitely please use it. But when we're using it here, running our inverter hard, using some big appliances. I've got my fan switch there. How do we use the inverter? So we've arrived at camp, and what we have here is an on-off switch for the inverter. What happens, I've decided, plug in the coffee machine, I want to turn on the power. I just hold down the power button, it's gonna cycle up with a couple of codes, but I'm waiting for it to get to the voltage on my battery. So the voltage there is 13.2 volts. This battery being lithium, 13 volts is a full battery. Got lots of power, appliances can run, the fridge, all my water pumps running great off 13 volts. 12 and a half volts is a half, halfway or 50% of my battery. So remember, 12 and a half volts, I'm getting, starting to get low. 12.0 volts. If you have a lithium battery, 12.0 volts is empty. So please remember down to 12 volts, even if this little monitor is saying, hey, you got lots of power, that 12.0 volts is empty. Try not to use your inverter or big appliances there. This is showing me what's in the battery, 13.2 volts. All of a sudden I go and I really plug in the kettle, turn it on, and it doesn't work. Nothing's working in my 240 PowerPoints. Nothing's working PowerPoints inside, out here, or extra ones underneath my bonnet. Now these guys here, what has happened? Why is it not working? I've tripped out the inverter and there's a normal circuit breaker or drop switch on the edge of this inverter. I can see it right down there. If it tripped, I will still have the lights on here, but nothing will get through. So please make sure I plug into mains power, I connect and I say, why is my battery not charging? Why are my plugs not working? Check the circuit breaker, the drop switch, right here on the very edge of the inverter. Great tip there through the EnerDrive system. The second one we wanna talk about now is just, I finished using my appliances. Just by having that light on, I am using power. So to save power, bush camping, I will long press, turn my inverter off. I'm now saving power and I don't have to worry in the bush camping. Anytime I need it, turn it on. When I'm done, turn it off. When you see this system, you'll see there's some circuit breakers, some reset button, and some fuses. So if you do have a whoopsie, a wires disconnected, that's the first place I'm gonna check. We're now finished with that. We have a lithium battery, spare power points, and our sink and water pump. We talk about the water pump. We've already put our drain in. To use the water pump, I'm just going to lift it up and that's gonna turn the water on and put it down. The water pump has three redundancies. So number one is I have to turn the water pump inside or the main switch. Turn the main power on. The second one is turn the power on at this pump. The reason it says turn that off when you're not using it, we don't wanna have a water hose come loose and that just start to run, 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 especially if we are away from camp. So as soon as we're not cooking dinner, not using it, we're gonna leave that switch turned off and that's gonna save us ever having a water leak here. Remember, up will engage the water. And we've got cold water from our 120 liter water tank.
Now our water tank here is now on the Rover. It's installed at the back. So there's a checker plate on our stainless steel water tank. It's actually secured with straps that are padded. And then that checker plates over top just as a shroud to protect from dings and dents. Now the water tank has four bolts on either end. So eight bolts holding it up. It's a great redundancy on that. And our spare tires now move to the middle and our spare tire is now on a cradle under the middle. So this has given us more clearance underneath and a great little clearance and look in the Stockman Rover with a water tank at the back. We're talking about setting up here and I do have legs here. If I'm ever set up for more than two nights, I have people going in and out of the bed, people on and top of the roof, all the walls, bedrooms, everything set up, I can use the legs. The legs make it stable, maybe in some wild weather, they're gonna feel great, but for an overnight or a weekend trip, I'm not always gonna use those legs. Hooking up to the car, I might not always need to use them, but they are there. So please use them at your own discretion for your own conditions. And if you find that you want to not rock the bed when you get up early and leave someone else to sleep in. Like any 12 volt battery system, we've got a 12 volt fridge here. So the Bushman 135 liter fridge, I've got my tab under here, lift up my tab and open up the door. Now inside here, it's got some little setup guides. But what I do have is I've got a dial up here in the corner. It goes from one till seven. Now up here we find that four or five on the dial is quite good um, for my fridge, four or five. If I'm going tropical north, I might have to turn it up a little bit higher. And if I'm on the road and there's a lot of humidity around and that ice box freezes up, I might have to defrost it every two or three weeks. So that's something you look at. Now, if people have come to me and said, Shane, it's freezing up all the time, please check your seals. But there's a good chance that it's just that the door has had a lot of weight on it and it's a little bit out of alignment. Just by adjusting the alignment, making sure every time that door closes, it closes firm. The reason it was frosting up was because the door was part open, letting too much air in. So it is really good. We like the Bushman fridge. We've got the freezer up there. It has an ice cube tray in it. Um, I can fit dinner for five frozen um, meat dishes in there. And I can also put ice in there for the gin and tonics. So it is really good. We do like it there using these shelves. Now, quite often people have loaded them up and said my shelf has fallen down, Shane. What is going on there? Now, what we're gonna tell you is that these little guys here, um, now these have been adjusted nicely already. We've gone through it, but just go and bend that out a bit. Give it a little bit more tension. You can see it's not straight. That tension will hold it in place if you ever find that your drawers are dropping. I do love the Bushman with this little guy here. When I have a few of those open, you can see that I can actually stand up milk um, because I can't always get the two liter bottle here. So our last trip, we had one liter bottles and we had beer, wine, and some goodies. Uh, we hid the chocolate up here, um, but I actually had my milk and I opened up those three and had my milk standing on the Perspex, standing right on there. That worked really well five days away with two bottles of milk, lots of coffee, it was great. Here we go, that's our fridge here. Remember the fridge has a switch inside. We have to leave the fridge switch on. Every time we're driving, especially in Queensland, make sure we turn the fridge fan on. The fan, you'll hear it running, it's gonna draw heat away from the fridge on these side vents. The fridge fan should be on when the kitchen is closed and you're driving. It doesn't need to be on at night or when the, this whole back area is open. That's a look here at the back of the Stockman Rover going through your handover and us of the team, SEQ Campers. Setting up our camper inside, what we have is our switch panel. It's all tucked into this cupboard nice and neat. Remember the whole time I'm camping, I'm gonna have the power on, which gives me my indicator there. The reason is that I want my fridge on, and if I kick mains power, I've now turned my fridge off, and now the beer is getting warm. So please remember 
Power is on my whole trip, and it's gonna show me my water tank here, 120 liters. The next one along is fridge. Now that's on the whole time I'm camping. When we're driving, please remember, fridge fan on when we're driving. So by having that fan on, it is a big fan, circulating the heat, the door is closed, driving in the warm weather, have your fan on. Water pump is the next one. So I have that on probably the whole time at the campsite, but I turn it on and off from the back. Water pump, that just makes sure that it doesn't come on accidentally. Socket, this is gonna be all my 12 volt sockets. So I've got a great little one here, 12 volt normal socket. I have USBs in here as well, and USBs and 12 volts beside the bed. Now those USB and 12 volts all have this very lovely blue light that is a bit bright at night. So pro tip is just get a black texture. If that blue light is too much for you, put a bit of black texture on there and that will dull it down for your USBs, especially the ones beside the bed. Now the next three switches we can see here are gonna be my internal light. So I've got a switch that turns on the light but it also has its own switch in the roof to turn it on and off. We've got a kitchen light. Again, it's now turned on in the kitchen, but the kitchen light has its own on and off switch. So if you find a light that's not working, the main panel is probably not turned on. External light is different. It does have an outside light and it doesn't have a switch out there. It is just our anti-bug or orange light. And that one there is connected only to this switch. So there we go, we've got hardware here. Now with our radio here, we do have a speaker underneath for some sound and we also then have a speaker on the outside. Now like with any of these radios, we haven't used a car stereo in a long time, so we have to remember how to use it. But there is basically here a Bluetooth stereo and a radio using that and finding the channels, a little antenna on top. Just remember, the power button might be hidden. It might be in there next to the source button. So just make sure you find out which one that is. Ours on this unit is located right beside the volume, nice and easy. So that's our stereo and setup here. Remember, while I'm driving, I'm gonna make sure I keep my power and fridge switches on and fridge fan on for the travel. This is our TV bracket. It also has a 12 volt plug ready to go. Really like the TV on here. It's quite comfortable sitting in the Stockman to watch a movie or something. And a smart TV, as long as I have 3G or 4G, I can pick up my Netflix or my other streaming programs on the TV. There's no TV antenna, so that would be an additional option just to get local channels. If you weren't using a DVD, USB movies, or smart TV streaming channels. So please remember that. Once I have power plugged in, we've done a lot of local trips. So just an easy trip, not off road, and we've left the TV hanging there. It's been quite comfortable, hasn't moved around. But for any longer trips, and please, the best advice is always to take the TV off its bracket and lay it on the bed, lots of room on the bed, and put this away. That's probably the best advice. But as you know, I like things to be easy, so I keep it as simple as possible. That is a TV on our Stockman Rover. Here is the hardware on the front of our Rover, and this is some of the stuff that we love to use or put inside. One of them is a Sirocco fan. Please remember, we're gonna open this up. Now, by opening that tab, I can move this around, close the tab, locked in, now I'll open the tab here. I can then move the fan and it oscillates that way or that way, right? So I've got it here. I'm a big fan of moving it first, then turning it on. The button is on both sides. So there's a button here and this button is actually connected to my sockets. So my USB and my 12 volt circuits are connected to my fan here and I must have my socket switch on. I've got it in situation, in position there. I've got a button on this side and this side. One, two, three, and then once more for off. Once I turn it to on, it also has a timer. So the timer does three hours, six hours, nine hours, or 12 hours. So you can see a little blue light will be glowing and it'll turn itself off after that three, six, or nine hours. Now the Sirocco fan is doing great here. I could have it blowing right down on me. We've found that putting this fan 
blowing across to my side of the bed or that fan blowing back has worked really well. So I'll turn this one up high and have it blowing across to me. That's been my best way to use the Sirocco fans in the Rover. We've got some great magazine racks up here as well. With our reading lights, they are a push button. You're actually pushing the end of the glass to turn them on and they're quite flexible with our little LED reading lights. We've got 240 air conditioning here. Please remember once we do plug into mains power or a generator, we've got a remote control here. The best thing about these Dometic ones is they're actually a touch screen, so I can turn it on and off, change the settings, the mode, and the temperature right on the little touch screen inside the van or use the remote control. Talking about our doors and windows. Now this door here is great. We do really find that with the, all this space here, getting in and out of the van is really good and using or airflow through the van is so good. So even though I'm in this teardrop shape, I've just got so much space to move around. Using the window. Now quite often we will just have the glass open like that. It is a silver lining on the side. So when I put the blind up, it's actually reflecting heat. And oh my gosh, it is a great nap during the day. It's quite dark, cool, and protected in there. I want a little bit of air. I have it open like that at night, but still want the privacy. I've got my locks here and latches here. And we've talked about this before, but the latches actually have a middle tab. So when I lock them in the middle, I'm creating airflow or a gap so that it's actually breathing during the day. To lock them, I'm gonna pull them all the way in tight and come on the inside of that little pin. On the inside for locking in the middle is airflow when I'm camping or storing it at home. It's a great one there. Putting this out, tightening those up, bringing my midgy mesh down, that's me, I'm set up and I've got my van open and breathing. The other tips that we really wanna show you, pulling the handle closed and open here. The gas strut's so nice. I can just pop my lock here, get out, in and out of the van. Now how we make that comfortable is using these bolsters on the side of the bed. Now these bolsters here do make it quite comfortable for that edge and everything there. But what we have is three locks on the door. So these big locks are what we're doing to give you a double seal, inside seal, outside seal for these big doors. A best tip for us is to make sure we take these bolsters out. Just by putting them on the bed, what we're doing is we're not having that latch rub, wear or tear on the bolster, and we're just gonna have it on the inside there of the van. So that for travel and looking after your equipment is gonna make it easier to do that bottom latch by moving this out. We're ready to close the door. So what we'll do here is I'm now gonna push this closed. Now, just for this experience, I'll loosen that off. I've got a key lock here for this main door here. It's gonna say doors, big one. Now I've got these latches. Please remember during travel, we're going to latch those top and bottom. I can actually see that seal oh, pulling in. And when we ever had trouble doing that, remember move the bolster, it'll make that one easier. I've turned it all the way a whole 180 degrees to undo those. And you see how it's actually pulled on that seal. Now here's a big tip. We did a whole bunch of corrugation, went out west, and because of this rain we've had, out west has been so green. One of the nicest drives we've done on this last camping trip in the Rover. Now with this guy here, black paint on this door frame, if I have sand, dirt, dust sitting on this seal here, not thinking too much about it. It's just gonna go right from this nice soft rubber. It's gonna turn into sandpaper and it's just gonna scratch along that paint. So using a wet wipe or paper towel, if I've done a lot of dirt and I'm just gonna go and give that a quick wipe before heading home or after that, it's just gonna stop any of that sandpaper like feeling affecting the tape or the paint around here of the edge. It's one of our pro tips helping keep the dust out of the door on the Stockman Rover. Let's talk about the passenger side of the Stockman Rover. Now here we've got power. So we've got 
a 15 amp plug. So that's the large earth that plugs in there. 15 amp plug just means we can run air con. Every generator and every caravan park is a 15 amp plug or 15 amp lead. You can buy a converter to plug it in at home. Your plugs at home are generally a 10 amp 240 plug. Now we can do that 15 amp plug in there. Just remember we've got some circuit breakers or drop switches there. So if you find it's not charging or not working, just make sure that that switch is in the up position and your plug is plugged firmly and all the way in. Sometimes just by stepping on the lead, you've pulled it out enough that that plug is not working and the problem is there, not something inside. Great place to start looking if you're fault finding a 240 issue. The next one here is the toolbox. Now I've got my lovely set of keys here. I've got my table, so we'll just look here for my table. And we've got this just as a little 90 degree, turn the hooks and drop down. Now this was a great spot for us to put our most important things, such as bug spray, sunscreen and stubby coolers. We put it here because if we wanted to make sure we had it the whole trip. So it was just a great reminder of where to put it. It's up high, safe, and a bit away from the animals. With this guy here, just break those two locks. If it doesn't want to close, you've just got to give it that firm little push and lock that before travel. Outside speaker and light. We talk about wheels. Now we can match, like this vehicle, we've matched to 18 inch wheels to match the vehicle and we've got alloy wheels there. Please remember, alloy wheels are a softer metal. So with the alloy wheels, or with any off-road wheels, please check your wheel nuts after a thousand kilometers. We're gonna do this in the handover and we're gonna ask you to check your wheel nuts when you get home from your very first trip. That does two things. One of them is it makes sure that you actually have a star or a tire iron that fits this. There's a good chance that your vehicle and the wheel studs on this could be a different size. So having a wheel brace that will fit this, check it on your first journey home, check your wheel nuts and make sure after that road trip, they're done. The also, we really wanna make sure every thousand kilometers on a huge trip around Australia, don't forget it's worth checking them. Keep an eye on your wheels and they'll look after you. Just so you know, before we pull it tight there, just making sure that that sits over top of that knuckle. I'm just gonna make sure that it doesn't wanna catch on the last pole there, which is my highest pole. By making sure that that's above my pivot point, it's not gonna get caught there. Once I pull that tight, I do have this great little bar. It's gonna go all the way up, lock in, and that's giving me the slope or the fall on my awning we are at the toolbox or our front pod here. So toolbox on my keys and I can then open this up and it's a pressure latch, what we call there a uh, pressure catch. Now this guy opens up. Now we've got this tempered here. Inside this is where you're gonna find all the goodies that come with your Stockman Rover. Now one of them is gonna be this great step that we can use for the awning as well and getting around there. In this, we've also got a 30 second dome tent that's gonna fit on this awning. There's a 30 second tent on this particular order. I've got my smart TV. So my TV is already set up with a bracket and that can go inside on the bed and be hung up and used there. My solar blanket here, again, we saw the Anderson plug that's going to match that solar blanket at the back of the van, plug it in, take it out, put it in the sun. It's a great offset to your power use. We've got a bag here with some walls. So depending on your options you've chose, we've got walls here for privacy and to close in with our 30 second awning. This one is set up with a great awning. I love the 30 second awning and these walls, really easy for privacy. Remember sand pegs are great, sand pegs for out the beach, but it comes with pegs and ropes and its own bag. We're also gonna check out the other side and what we have included over there. But we've got legs on this unit, so we have front legs as well. And here is a winder for those legs there. There's a light inside this, 
So we've got the Rover light on this side of the tunnel, passenger side, where we keep most of our everyday things. More long-term or larger items, I put on the other side. So when you see in our videos, we've got tables and the generator on the other side. Those things come out once, go back in once. Stuff on this side, I could use more constantly over the duration of my weekend. That is the front toolbox or the pod at the front of the Rover. Let's open up the driver's side of the Rover. So the front box here on the driver's side, I've right now got my box of all the accessories that come with this as well. So inside here is my Rover shower tent. There's also three poles to set up that shower tent. If I've got a bag here with pegs and ropes. So again, roping it down on windy days is great or pegging it down with the walls is another way to secure my awning. Inside here, I've also got my little handle for the cradle and everything underneath. And I've got more wall, the more walls you get, the more bags of pegs you get. So lots of accessories in here. And I've also got another dry bag with my shower hose. So we're gonna check this out and connect our shower hose and our gas hot water system. This is all living here right now on our driver's side of the Rover. So we've got a gas system or a gas hot water on the Rover here, and it's got the two bottles connected. Built-in regulator onto our valve, so this will control gas from one or the other bottle. When we turn these bottles on, I'm now facing this way, I'm releasing gas into the system, and the bayonets are live working at the back. Now, what I would do here is these new bottles um, have these great big handles, so I leave them connected. If I can remember, I would try and disconnect once in a while, let the gas run out. It will make my regulator last longer if when I'm finished my trip, I've actually released all the gas in the regulator and not just left that under pressure during storage. So once I'm home from my trip, by disconnecting the gas, releasing pressure, I'm gonna look after my gas regulator on the unit. So my gas hot water system here. Now again, dry bags I think are great. I use them not only just to keep water out, but keep water in. This is our water system. Now when you get your Rover, this will be a little bit of setup, practice and use for you. So try it at home and do it at home. Um, maybe before your first trip. It's great to know that everything's working. You understand what's happening before you head out on the road and say, gosh, I just would like to have a shower. So inside here, we've got the shower head, the original kit and bracket there, as well as some fittings if I wanted to connect um, a tab to the top there. We've got a shower head that we do then need to connect to our hose and that shower head on there. So that's some practice and set up at home, test it out with your gas and hot water. Now with the gas system here, we've got a bayonet. So we've got opening up over center catch, just has a safety pin, remove the pin. And I find that putting this pin right here is great. We've also found that soap, shower, other little things in there work really well. Now we would throw down a little mat on the floor. Our porta potty fits in here quite well as well. So this gas system here is gonna now connect to the bottom of my gas hot water. Now this will connect to the same bayonet as a stove or a similar one here. So the great thing is with this, if I had another barbecue, I could actually cook out on this side of the van and use the gas that's under here. Again, turn the cap to the middle. Make sure I find the little slot and turn the right way. So that's a little hit up there of the unit. Now what we've got going on here is part of this hose. Again, this is something you wanna practice and set up at home. We wanna connect this to our pump or our main thing. So right now I'm gonna just make sure my pump is off so I don't get the pressure running out. And I've got my fitting here for water. So like an air hose fitting, I'm just gonna put that in. I have to actually physically pull this back, push this in, 
And if it doesn't slide out, give it a little turn or a wiggle. Make sure that's now locked in. This is water out of the tank. So cold water goes on my blue tap here. This is water from the tank. I'm now connected. This is hot water and connect to my shower head. So I'm gonna go hot water. This is hot water coming out. Now this kit had the two different shower heads. I haven't played with this very much, but I'm imagining that this is gonna be my great little wash up one. Now different parks and different places we go, we can use this as a little shower or a large low flow shower head, a little bit more like a rainforest shower. With my little one here, this is gonna work really well because I can now have hot water here. I can use this to rinse off my dishes and I can use some hot water around the kitchen and it's an easy way to make my gas hot water system work. Now, if I wanted to turn this on, what I'm gonna do is make sure the gas is on, make sure that I've got power in my nine volt batteries here and then I'm gonna turn on my settings here. What I have is heat. Heat, I can crank this up to very hot. Then I have water flow. Do I want a lot of pressure or do I want lighter pressure coming out? Depending on how I want to use or save water. You can see high pressure, low pressure. Then I've got summer and winter. Now again, here in Queensland it's quite hot. So I put it on summer. I don't need 70 degrees coming out of that. I just want it to be a lovely 45, 50, 60 in summer here. Winter, all of a sudden, I'm in the desert. We've gone down south. It is quite cold. Turn it to winter. And that winter, you will see that it will come out hotter there. I need gas on, water on, and then we can fire up the system. We've now hooked up all our systems there. So this fitting does fit better on the large one. I'd probably use some thread tape if I was using the smaller head. I've got a couple of guys here. We're connected now with the gas on. I've got an on and off switch here. I can see nothing's happening. Why isn't it working? I do have to then turn on the water. The system will only work when water's running through the valve there. It is connected, no power. What's happening? I need to run the water. I can then hear it spark, it's fired up, and let's, ooh, it's gone from 25 degrees, 48, we've now got 50 degrees. Yep, that's a bit okay. Um, I'm gonna turn that down as it got up to 60 degrees. So again, if you say, why isn't my system working? It's only working once I do have my shower, 62. Once I do have water hooked up, as soon as that water goes off, the system shuts down, it's not working or burning gas anymore. Fired up, 25 degrees, 62, oh my gosh. So please be careful. I've now turned that to medium heat. I've got low water flow. Let's go, oh, there we go. Ouch, um, 60 degrees. I've turned that water flow up quite nice. This is fun. Um, that's a good temperature for me. In the middle is gonna be mine, and that's gonna be the wife's temperature. Hot and cold. Turn it off, the system shuts down. Remember, your on and off switch is here, and water and power is connected. That is a look at our gas hot water system on the Rover. So our handover and hitching up to the vehicle. Now we do have the guide of everything we wanna check on the van, but what we wanna do here is hitch up to the vehicle. A DO35 hitch comes with its own pin, so we require you to bring the tongue from your vehicle or your tow bar, and we're gonna take the ball off there. Now there's a couple of ways, like a big shifter works well. We've also got a big breaker bar or drill, but I've got one of these so I can change my hitch quite easily. Especially if I had a couple of other um, trailers that I'm using. Now with this one, fairly new hitch, I'm gonna go and get that guy off like that. Now if I don't have, or this one wants to keep spinning, I would get vice grips. But when I do that with the DO35, it actually comes with its own top shifter to stop that from spinning and then use my wrench on the other side here. I love this spanner because I can hit it with a hammer. Again, if it is spinning, vice grips or giving it that impact to release. 
So come with your tongue. It's okay if you bring the bowl. We'll take that off and give that back to you. The DO35 again has a locking nut. And when we want to lock this guy on again, and I've given that a bit of a torque up with this one. Now this red cap here is just for protection. So this is just gonna look after your pin when you're not hooked up to your trailer. So that'll go back inside the trailer or the back of the car. This DO35 pin is for when we wanna release. So I'm gonna use this, there's gonna be a hole in here and I'm gonna use that to lock the top side when I'm using my spanner underneath. So we'll put these two guys away and we can store those in the vehicle. We're all hooked up here now. So one of the things is that we'll back up onto the vehicle and with this DO35, it wants to be higher than my pin here. So I'm gonna make sure I raise my jockey wheel up. Now it's got a great reflector on it. So even when I'm trying to do a sneaky hook up at night, I can see my hitch by that reflector. Now with this one, it's quite lightweight, so release my brakes. I can actually pull this one in pretty simply now, but if I was backing onto it, I'm gonna then back on and hopefully get close. Remember, if it's not perfect, that's okay because it's gonna find its way on. So I'm now lowering that down. I've got it pretty close. I might not wanna move the vehicle back and forth 10 times. So I'll get it pretty close. It's gonna then rest on top of the pin. I can see it moving, it's quite close. I try and pull it forward. I try and wiggle it, it's not working. Remember, release the brake and just give it that little nudge. Make sure it doesn't roll away, but that little nudge with the brake off and now that's locked right on. DO35 sits down, once the pressure is down, press the red button. Now I love the imagery here, but this is a pair means locked. So the shape of it is a circle, looks like a pair. I know it's locked and 100% I know it's locked is if my cap fits. So by putting on my cap and that stays on, I know it's engaged. Release the cap. What I'm gonna do there is push the button, hold it down, push the pair back, release the button. It now looks like an apple, it's quite round. Apple for open, press the button, pair for lock, and my cap fits, I'm ready to go. So the brakes are off and my jockey wheel is here. We're gonna load. Roll the jockey wheel all the way back up. Now a couple things could happen here. We like the exercise of fitting a bike rack or some other items to the front. Right here we've got our power 50 amp Anderson plug for charging and a seven pin flat is our preferred plug up here. Open up the cap, the two knobs on this are gonna sit inside the cap. That's what helps hold it on. So you know the knobs are down there. Again, this vehicle's set up with airbags, so it's got great suspension potential for loading up here. We're quite light on the front, 140, 160 kilo ball weight. I've got bikes on mine, generator full of gear, and I'm still only a 200 kilo ball weight with a heap of gear on it fully loaded. So that's us all set up there. Please remember with our chains here, what we're gonna do is cross the chains. So D-shackle comes across and crosses underneath. That allows it to have a little basket underneath. Now we'll hook both these up and check the lights. So please remember, check the lights often. It is a good practice when you do want especially here at the beginning. Now what we're gonna do here is on this jockey wheel and my stone guard, if I was trying to fit a variety of bike carriers or different items, they're all very adjustable. So I've got bolts here, I can move this forward and back and I can actually move this stone guard even closer to the vehicle. This is set up for a great turn, but don't be afraid to move your stone guard if you're fitting a different type of bike rack or something on my Heyman Reese at the front. That is hitching up your vehicle. Make sure nothing on the ground, jockey wheel away, chains, power, lights checked, hatches and windows ready to go. That is a Stockman Rover and driving away.